Hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well. As you know, I often use this time to talk about all the things we've got going on at Nativity. And believe me, right now, we've got a lot of things going on, a lot of things coming up. But for some reason, I feel called today to do a, a little bit of Bible study. Bible study on today's appointed gospel lesson. So let me read it to you. This is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 45 through 51. And, and for context, all of this takes place just after the feeding of the 5,000. That's where we take up. Immediately, he, Jesus, made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to him, he went up on the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. When he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning, walking on the sea. He intended to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, but they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, I am here. Do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded. You see, I wanted to talk about this, this little passage because it can be kind of head-scratching. It's, it's pretty head-scratching to me. Well, what's going on here? Why would Jesus send the boat ahead? He got, he's got to get to the other side. Why is he walking on the water? Why, why did he intend to pass them by? What's happening here? Well, I think there are really two messages here. The first has to do with uh, Mark's Christology. Christology is the, is the view of the nature of Christ. You have it at the, at the one hand, high, high Christology, which is seeing Christ as fully divine as well as fully human. And then low, low Christology would be a vision of Christ as someone who is blessed by God, but still just a human, a prophet, if you will. Obviously, it is our belief in the Episcopal Church in this very, very high Christology. Now, Mark never comes out and says, Jesus is divine, Jesus is God. Never says it. But this passage I just read is Mark's way of communicating his vision of Christology, his vision that Jesus is indeed divine. And he does it by bringing in some echoes, if you will, of Moses, and more importantly, Moses' encounter with God. We find Jesus walking on the water, which to any Jew of the day would be immediately reminiscent of that part of the exile when God does what? God parts the waves across the river, excuse me, across the Red Sea, so that the Israelites can escape in safety. So this is very reminiscent of that. Secondly, Mark tells us that Jesus intended to pass by the boat full of the disciples. This would immediately bring to mind Moses' first encounter with God when Moses, among other things, says, let me take a look at you, God. Let me see you. And God says, no, 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 you can't do that. You, you, can't, you can't survive that. But I'll tell you what I'll do. You stand over in this corner, in this crevice, and I will pass by, and you can see my shadow. And so having Jesus intend to pass by the disciples in the boat, again, would, would be reminiscent. It would be an echo of that encounter that Moses had with who? With God. So this is, this is Mark's way of telling to us that this man, Jesus, is also divine. Jesus is indeed God. The second thing that this passage does is give Mark's intended readers 
and us some hope. It's important to know the background here. Mark's church to whom he is writing were being persecuted on all sides. They, they, they hit the donut hole perfectly. The, the Romans headed out for them. The, uh, the, the Jews headed out for them. And so they were, getting, they were getting hit from both sides. They were a very oppressed, small church. And Mark, of course, knew, knew that. And so this story gives them some hope. Notice that our passage says that Jesus came early in the morning. A better translation of the Greek is during the fourth watch of the morning. The morning hours were, the darkness hours, if you will, were roughly 6 o'clock p.m. to 6 o'clock a.m., or at least that's how it was divided for the Roman watch. There were four watches, so the fourth watch was 3 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the morning. The way this story reads, it, it appears, doesn't it, that it would be closer to that 6 o'clock hour, in other words, closer to dawn. And throughout the Bible, dawn is associated with God's breaking through and acting in the world. In other words, God comes at that moment when the, the darkness is being chased away and the light has come. And then this idea of God being here with us is reinforced when Jesus gets in the boat and the storm is suddenly stilled. Mark is communicating to his church that just as God is with us, God will ultimately still the storm that is, sur that is surrounding them. And of course, that has a message for you and me today, doesn't it? This is an interesting little passage once we dig down deep, deep into it, and I hope you get something out of it. In the meantime, I hope you have a great rest of the week, and I hope to see you Sunday. Thank you.